All right, everybody, I am back with a brand new DC update. And yes, as you could tell by the title, Ben Affleck is back as Batman in DC Comics. In the newest issue of the Joker Year One storyline, it is definitely Ben Affleck. And so we're going to take a look at some of these panels from this comic story. And if you haven't seen a previous video, I did talk about the first issue of the Joker Year One selling out at the distributor level, and it is getting harder to find in comic shops. So if you want something from DC that is going to be valuable in the future or is going to be a collectible item, this is the story to get. And yesterday's issue is hot off the press. And I read it as soon as it became available. And I'm going to show you some of the panels. And it is definitely Ben Affleck. And we're going to look at some stuff that people have claimed online. Uh, that Well, I'm not going to show you what they said. But some people said it was Michael Keaton. Some people said it was, uh, what do you call it? Um, oh, you know, the guy who played the Dark Knight. Uh, I'm forgetting his name off the top of my head. And... Uh, People are saying it was uh, other actors that it wasn't. It is clearly Ben Affleck. And we're going to take a look at those panels. I'm also going to show you the documents because in the last video, I also talked about how with the documents that I talked about and how the Suicide Squad was not mentioned, talked about, or even a hit for HBO Max, I have the documentation now for the year that uh, 2022 when peacemaker came out during that time period and again it's not mentioned and i'm going to show you those documents and good news is those documents are public uh they were press releases so i could show those but i can't show the other stuff that is intellectual property so we're going to take a look at that as well and then i'm going to show you something really funny somebody posted online uh, in regards to something i posted and it's going to show you how stupid uh these these anti-dcu and anti-snyder people really are so first of all, this is from the first issue of the Joker War, and you can see that this person is heavily taking influences from Batman versus Superman. Uh, that is definitely uh, a direct correlation there. Now, what's funny though is this version of Batman is not the one that looks like uh, looks like uh, Ben Affleck, but that is definitely an image directly taken from this here. Again, we also have that from the poster as well. But again, that's not the same version that because there's three different Joker storylines running through year one, and one of them has has Ben Affleck's Batman in it, but it's not this version. So here we are. Now we're getting into the newer stuff. And if you look at the ears, you look at the way the mouth goes down, and you look at the suit, that is definitely Ben Affleck's Batman right there. We also have the Joker. The Joker is being tied up, and this is meant to be like Jared Leto's Joker. Uh, just how skinny he is and creepy he looks. Uh, this is definitely a take off of that. Here we've got another shot of Batman, and it definitely looks like Ben Affleck. Another shot from a different angle. But again, that's the same cowl. It's the same suit. You can even see the creases, you know, where they had uh, the damage on the suit where it was all tied together. So, yes, this is definitely Ben Affleck's version of Batman. Another shot. You can see the seams in there. And we've got this one as well. This is a good shot, too. And, it, you know, some people get upset that he's pointing a gun, but that scene, that particular panel, what happens next, is not what you think it is. Now, here's a full panel. And a lot of people said that this was the girl that that Zack Snyder was going to use as Catwoman. But it's clearly not. This, to me, definitely looks like... Let's zoom in here. This, to me, definitely looks like Michelle Pfeiffer. Okay? That is definitely Michelle Pfeiffer. That is not Carla. And I, I don't remember what her last name is. Uh, so this is definitely a mix of that. Now, people were trying to say this cowl is... He is, you know, from, uh, why am I forgetting his name today? Uh, the guy who played in the Dark Knight trilogy. <laughs> I don't know why I'm forgetting his name. That's what happens when you get older. Uh, but that's definitely Ben Affleck's cowl. There's no question about it. That looks like Ben Affleck. And so, again, you've got the suit is very visible on the side there. And this is, this is currently running in DC Comics, guys. It's some pretty cool stuff. 
So if you're interested, you can go check that out. It is selling out everywhere. And they're doing one issue a week. So last week was issue one. Issue two is this week. And the next issue, I think the story ends next week with issue three, which is unfortunate that's going to be such a short story. Uh, now, I could be wrong. Maybe it is going to be every week for the next month, but I, I don't think it is. From my understanding, is it is a three-part story, but uh, don't quote me on that. All right, now let's take a look at these documents. And I'm going to scroll through the documents. You guys can always pause the video to look at it later, but I'm not going to go through it uh, page by page because there's quite a few pages. So here are a couple more stills from the uh, comic book that is definitely Ben Affleck's Batman, his suit. You can clearly see it here. That is Ben Affleck without question. All right, guys. So what I have here is the quarter two 2022 earnings press release that was released in uh, August uh, 4th of 2022. And this has to do with everything that was going on with Warner Brothers Discovery and it's got their financials in here, and they talk about their big properties. And again, if you scroll through this entire thing, um, there is nothing in here that even mentions, uh, not even a mention of Peacemaker. It was not part of their highlights, so it's not talked about in here. It's not talked about in anything that they talked about in this whole entire document. So this goes out to their investors. If Peacemaker was something that was good for them, they would have mentioned it in this document because they definitely did talk about some other properties. Then we have quarter three of 2022, and it's the same thing. There is nothing in this entire document that even mentions or has a picture of Peacemaker. It was not the big streamer that they said it was. But yeah, you can definitely go through all of this and you can pause it. You can read what it says here, but nowhere is Peacemaker mentioned. It was never a big part of their business. It wasn't what they said it was for Warner Brothers Discovery and for HBO Max. And so, you know, people can claim whatever they want to claim. It doesn't make it true. It doesn't make it true. And we know that Warner Brothers Discovery has been completely deceptive uh, with their practices. Here's some other big news that came out just today is that they're going to have the Fantastic Four. That film is going to release two weeks after James Gunn Superman. So if it doesn't make a crap ton of money in those first two weeks, it's done. And so it's pretty crazy. <laughs> it's getting pretty crowded in July of 2025. Let's put it that way. And I wouldn't be surprised if at some point they move Superman Legacy. I w it wouldn't surprise me at all. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen, but it would not surprise me in the least if they decide to move it. Uh, I think that would be smart to move it into May of that year instead, but that does give them less time to work on it. Here's another AI photo of Henry Cavill as Superman, and there's something about this photo that really, it really hits. He's got this compassionate look on his face. Um, I don't know why he would be dressed like this, especially partially in his Superman suit and partially not out on the street, but uh, it's still... Just a cool-looking photo. He's got snow in his hair. Uh, it's just it's just a, a human-looking type moment for Superman. All right, so I tried to find that post that this person did on Twitter, and I was able I was unable to locate it. And I thought I took a picture of it, but I didn't. And this is what the picture was. And I, I just cannot believe the mentality of these anti DCEU and anti Snyder group. Just how this group behaves. It's it's unbelievable. Now, I have a reason to go after James Gunn. He is the head of DC Studios. The optics are not good when he's writing and directing everything and when he's going to be doing even more in the future when he was hired as a CEO, not the writer and director. And so it is getting annoying 
And it's it's very disheartening to see what he's doing. And I'm going to continue to talk about him. I have a legitimate reason to. He's the one who's in charge. Nobody else. But these people cannot get their minds off of Zack Snyder. And the other day I did a post where I talked. It was funny. I shared this thing on Twitter of uh, Hugh Jackman coming out and changing the name of the Deadpool 3 movie. And it was pretty funny. Uh, you can go find that post. And then I did a post the other day talking about the DCU starting off with a filthy and disgusting, you know, creature commandos. And they posted this and they said the hypocrisy of the Snyder cultists, specifically me, saying that it's okay for Deadpool, but it's not okay if they do it over here with creature commandos. The mentality of these people is just astounding. It's two separate things entirely. This is what you expect. This is what you... This is what you expect when you go see Deadpool. When you're watching a cartoon on HBO Max that's starting off a brand new DC universe and you want to grab the masses and that's what you're starting with, can you envision if they had started the MCU off with Deadpool? Do you think that would have been a success? No, it wouldn't have. It would have been panned. It would have destroyed the universe before it even started. It's not okay for them to be starting with that kind of a property on HBO Max. And I am going to watch it and review it, but I have no interest in it at all. And in fact, I'm going to be going to see, I believe I'm going to go see Madam Web today. I've got the time today, and I just, man alive, I just, I'm going to go see it to give a review, but I'm not expecting it to be good. It's not looking good. All right, guys, there's my DC news for today. I do appreciate the support. We will see you on the next video.